Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to show you how to model a product feeder. That is, a component that can make products during a simulation. Those products, in turn, can be used in process modeling. Before you get started, make sure you are using Visual Components Professional or Premium because you need access to the modeling tab here. If you need a reference for a product feeder in your eCatalog panel, you can go to Models by Type, click Process Flow Components down here, and look at this component called Feeder. We're going to make a feeder from scratch, so first clear the 3D world of all components. You can press Control plus N key. And now click the Modeling tab, create a new component, change the name of the component to My Product Feeder. You can think of a better name if you want. Let's now add some geometry. I'll go to the Features drop-down menu, add a box or block feature, change its dimensions. Let's use a length and width of 500 and a height of 700. To quickly add the behaviors I need to my feeder, I'm going to use the wizards group here in the ribbon and I'll use the conveyor wizard. You could read the tooltip for more information, but I'll just use the default values so I'll create frames for my path along the top face, the top of the box here. I'll assume the direction of my conveyor is in the x-axis, so notice my floating origin here and the move tool, it's going that way. For input connection, we don't need that, but we do want an output connection to flow or move our products to another component, something that is connected to the feeder, like a conveyor. So we'll create that interface. We don't need to create or add a component creator, because we want to work with products, so it's actually the different behavior. For path interpolation, we want to go in a straight line, but you could change this if you want to for your own model to be step or cubic. I'll click this button to create the conveyor behaviors. So one click. We can see the frames were added along the top face. My frame label size might be bigger than yours. If I click the File tab, for example, Options, Display, my frame label size is at 30. I think the default is 10. We don't need frame 1, so if we go to our component graph panel, notice I have properties and behaviors. If you can't see these, you have toggle buttons here, so you can turn on or off component properties, the display of them, as well as the display of behaviors in nodes. So here are my behaviors. The wizard added a statistics behavior, a path with input and output ports, so moving something in or out of the path. The out interface that allows us to connect the path to another component, and a sensor interface which allows us to connect external sensors to the path if we want. We don't need this sensor interface for our case, so I'm going to right-click the sensor interface and delete it. For our path, we don't need to start at the beginning of the block here, so what we can do is go to the path properties, find its path property here and expand it. We don't need path frame 1 here, so I'll just click the trash can to remove it from this property here. So now the path will go from path frame 2 to path frame 3. If you want, you can select path frame 1 in the 3D world and delete it. So you can select, right click, delete. And this is our path, but now we need to add the behaviors for process modeling to make the products. I'll go to the behaviors drop down menu here, and under process model, click product creator. So you want to use this behavior to make products. And now the behavior is added, but if we expand it in the component graph panel, you can see it also has inputs and outputs. So the output of our creator, we want to connect that to the beginning of our path, its input port. So select the output port of the product creator. And in the properties panel, set its connection to be the path. And do we want to connect to the beginning or end of the path? The beginning, so its input port. So now whatever we make will be flowed into our path. What do you think the next step is? Save your work, of course. So let's go to the component group here in the ribbon, click Save. You can add more information you want to the file, but in my case, I'll just save it to my computer. So do that now and continue with the video. Okay, I've saved the component. It's now ready to test with other components. Let's go to our Home tab. And in our eCatalog panel, under Models by Type, I'll expand conveyors, click Visual Components. Let's take this first conveyor here, drag it into the 3D world. 
And using the PMP command, let's drag it towards our feeder. We get the green arrow, that's good. So continue dragging the direction of the green arrow until the conveyor snaps to the feeder. You get the green arrow, that means they are connected. Now, if we run the simulation <laughs> and nothing happens, that's because we don't know what to make during the simulation with our creator. So we have to define those product types now. Let's reset and add a couple components in the 3D world that can be used as kind of a visual of the products we want to make. Under Models by Type and E-Catalog Panel, I'll click Basic Shapes, add a block, a cone, and a cylinder. Now go to the Process tab, click Products on the ribbon here to see the Product Type Editor. We don't have a flow group for moving them, nor any product types, so if you add a product type, it should create a flow group for you automatically. We have one product type, but let's keep on making them, so let's add another product type and another one. So you should have three product types. For product type one, you can right click and rename it. Let's rename it to be block. And with the block product type selected, let's go to its properties and let's define the block component we have in our 3D world to be the visual or reference for our product block. So I'll use the pick command here. Just click the block and now it's associated with this product type here. Technically we can delete the block at this point, we don't need it anymore. So you can select it and press the delete key. Oh, it's gone. But if we want, we can still get the properties from the component. We want to specify our product more. So if you expand it, click component properties, right click, Notice you have the option to add properties from that block that we just deleted, so length, width, height, material, and so on. Let's use material. And instead of using a white, let's use uh, let's use a transparent color. Maybe transparent orange. Well not blue. Transparent blue is fine. Titanium is tempting me though. <laughs> let's use transparent blue. And let's do the rest for the other product types. So for product type 2, let's right click, rename, make this be cone. With the product type selected, use the component URI property. Let's pick it in the 3D world, so it's this component here. We don't need it anymore, so we can just select it, press the delete key. Product type 3, you can select it. You can change its name here in the properties panel, so I can change this to be cylinder and then select its component URI. Component is now referenced by the product types, so we can delete it. And now, if we run our simulation, still, we're not making anything. That's because we haven't told the creator to make these products. So let's reset, select our feeder, and in its component properties panel, notice it has a tab called Product Creator, and this is what you'll use to define what you want the creator to make. It has a feed mode, you can make one product at a time, a batch of products, use a table from like an Excel sheet. You can use a distribution or some type of pseudo-random number or constant value. I will show you how to use all of these feed modes in this video. For single mode, we have an interval of how often we want to make the part. We have a limit of how many parts we want to make. For part pooling, that mostly relates to limiting the amount of or sharing resources and memory in your computer, so we're not going to use that in this video. For the part we want to make, it's our product. Let's make a block. So every five seconds we'll make a block. If I run the simulation, ho oh ho! There's our transparent blue box. It's like a ghost almost. But yep, every five seconds we're making it. Let's reset. And I'm not a fan of that transparent blue anymore. Let's change that material to be Hopefully you know where I'm going with this. Titanium, yes, just like the song. Uh, yep, just like that you can change out the specification for your product. Reset, select the feeder again. Instead of making a block, let's make a cone. Run the simulation, and now you're making cones. Reset, change out the product type to be cylinder. Run it again, now you're making cylinders. So that's one example of how you can use a single feed mode for the creator. Let's now use a batch. This allows you to create a table. So for the products, let's make a block, a cone, and a cylinder. So three rows for the block. Let's make one of each first. 
So one, one, and one. For the interval, because we're not making multiple, I'm sorry, not making more than one product at a time, so we're not making two or three blocks, we're just making one, we're going to reference the batch interval property here. So this is the amount of time or delay for going from this row to the next row and back again. So if we do a batch interval of 10 seconds, we'll make one block, then 10 seconds, make a cone, wait 10 seconds, make a cylinder, wait 10 seconds, and then start again by creating a block. So there's the block in the beginning, but after 10 seconds of simulation time, we get the cone, then wait 10 seconds, make the cylinder, wait 10 seconds, and make the block. Yep, simple enough. Reset. Well, let's get crazy. Let's make three blocks every five seconds. So this will make a block every five seconds, and then it will wait 10 seconds before making the cone. Wait 10 seconds to then make a cylinder. Wait 10 seconds to start making the blocks again. One block, five seconds. Next block, another five seconds. Next block, wait 10 seconds now to make the cone. Now wait 10 seconds to make the cylinder. Yep. And wait 10 seconds to start making the blocks again. And those are being made at a five second interval. So, may have went a bit too fast with this, but just rewatch the video if you need to. But this is kind of how the batch is working. So, you can define the interval for making the amount of parts you need, and then you can define an interval for when you go to the next row to start making them. And that's what we did here. For table, let's not let's do that last actually. Let's talk about distribution. Now, this is not a pseudorandom number or some type of a normal distribution that you're using. It's using a weighted probability. So if we have our products of, say, a block and a cylinder, let's change the interval to be 10 seconds. Now, this is a constant value but for the time mode, but for time mode you can actually use a distribution like normal or uniform if you want. That's just for time, the time it takes to create the part. The probability is weighted though. So this probability value right here is telling us that we're going to make a total of two. And we only have two products listed here. So it's a 50% chance that either of these products will be made. So if we run the simulation, well, a block was made. And then after 10 seconds, it's a cylinder. But there's no guarantee it might be a block, because now it's a cylinder, because it's a 50-50 chance it might be either or. But if we want, we can reset, change the count to 2 for the block. I'm sorry, it's probability. It's weight to 2. So now we have a total count of 3. So if we run our simulation, we should see more blocks created than cylinders. And that's what's happening. If we want, we can change the block to 5 and the cylinder to three. So now we have a total count of eight. So it's most likely gonna create a block, but still quite a, a bit of cylinders. So after about 30 seconds, I think the next one probably might be a cylinder. Yep, it is. And it might be a cylinder again, yeah. Oh, oh. So, what I want you to understand is that don't get into the habit of thinking, well, this is the amount of parts it will create. It's not. It's a weighted value. Those weighted values are then added up. So, if we want, what we could do is add our cone and give it a probability of 9. What do you think will happen? Will we make more blocks than the other ones? More cylinders or more cones? Well, this is a higher probability. So we're ended up with cones. So this is an example of how you can use a feed mode of distribution. It might take some getting used to if you're not familiar with weighted probability.
it's reset. And now let's go on to the table feed mode. So this allows you to load in a file uh, that uses like, kind of a like comma separated format or um, quite simply an Excel sheet that's an XLS format. So if you want you can take a bunch of data, put it into an Excel sheet and then import it to define the product you want to make and the time during the simulation to make that part. So to give you an example, let's open Excel. Oh, here we go. This is quickly becoming an Excel tutorial. <laughs> no. And the format is you'll have the product first, the product type you want to make, and then the time. And this time is the simulation time. So for our product, let's take a look. We have block, cone, and cylinder. Let's make those. So block, cone, cylinder. When do we want to make them? Well, they have to go in order. So if I put 10 seconds here and then 2 seconds here, this won't work. It has to be, you know, after the 10 seconds. So this would actually have to be 12 seconds. And then the cylinder, we can make that at 20 seconds. Let's now save. This file is an XLS. Do that on your own. Okay, I, I saved this as an Excel sheet. You can see I called it myorder.xls. So this is the file format extension you need. And you also need to close the file. It cannot be open when you import it. So let's close it out. And then for table, let's use the file property. You can type in the file path if you want or the URI or just load it from your file explorer. So I'll do that now. Okay, I went to the file path for my Excel sheet and after it finished loading it then created this table for me. So you can't edit the table, you would have to edit the Excel sheet itself. But you can see here's my block, it'll be created at 10 seconds, the cone will be created at 12 seconds, and then when the simulation reaches 20 seconds it will make the cylinder. So if we now clear our output panel in case there's any errors, run the simulation, and nothing is happening. That's because we have to wait until 10 seconds. Boom! There's the block, 12 seconds, there's the cone, 20 seconds, there's the cylinder. And you might be thinking, well, is it going to create a loop? Nope, that's not what happens in table mode. It will create the parts you want based on the imported file. If you want a loop, use batch or consider using single mode or the distribution. Okay, let's now edit our table. Get a bit crazy, so I'll go back to Excel. and access my Excel sheet. So here it is again. Let's say we want to make, uh, I don't know, maybe a hundred items. And then with these values, you can do something like that if you want. Well, let's actually undo that. Select them like this. Depends on how good your Excel skills are. <laughs> this is pretty basic. But all the way down here. And we just get some time values here. So all the way up to about five minutes for 100 products. So I'll save this. And close it out. And just import it again. Okay, so I loaded the file. And notice the products are now listed here along with their time. If you don't see an update in your table, just click Define Products here and then try importing the file again to create the table. So now if I run the simulation, so after about 10 seconds it'll start making products. Yep, and now we should just keep on making the products all the way to about, I think, 5. Well, it's actually 504 seconds. Sorry, and that's uh, my math isn't too good, but I think after three minutes, maybe. Yeah, I'm still making them. Oh, -ho, larger than I thought. And, yep. So after about nine minutes, the work order stops. Okay. So at this point, what you could do. So you can reset, go back to the modeling tab, and save the component. So now if I save my component, my work, and let's
let's go to our home tab let's delete the feeder oh getting crazy again so just delete it and you're probably thinking my data my data what happened to my data well let's see what happens when we add our feeder back to the 3d world again so I saved it in my my models you can find the component wherever you saved it and add it to the 3d world here it is hello old friend add it to the 3d world and notice it's here I can connect it to my conveyor and ho ho notice that the table and all that data is saved with the component so don't worry it will be you know persist it will be saved with your component if you add it here and if we go to our process tab and look at our product types those are saved as well with a component so now if I run the simulation after 10 seconds we should see the parts being made yep and it goes on and on and on so I could even reset and change the mode to be batch. There's the batch I had first. And notice it's just repeating itself. I'm gonna make the work order I defined here. And now make a cone after the interval of 10 seconds. Okay, this completes the video. If you have any more questions, please feel free to visit our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com. And as always, have a wonderful day.